Hello and welcome along to the next instalment of my Camper Conversion YouTube channel. So this video is part of a series converting a VW T5 high top from a mobile mechanics van into a fully fledged DVLA registered camper van. The jobs have been cracking along quite nicely inside so far. Everything's insulated, everything's carpeted. I managed to get the front seats in. So now it's time to start building up the interior units and the rear bed base, things like that. This video is going to be showing how I build the entire kitchen unit. Now the plan I'm having so far is I'm going to be having a kitchen unit going along the side there with a Smurf 9222 gas and sink unit in it. It's going to have a three-way Electrolux fridge underneath it, so I'm going to have to put some vents going to the outside of the van. Then later on, after this is all built, I'm then going to be putting a U-shape sofa bed that will pull out across to make it into a nice almost full width bed as well so that's going to be still way down the line that one i say this video is purely going to be all about the actual kitchen build itself there's going to be some drop out holes put in because the kitchen unit's going to have gas bottle storage as well and whenever i fit any sort of gas bottles you safety wise you always need to put some drop out holes to do with the flooring so i'm going to have to get under the fan and find out where's going to be the best place to, uh, to be drilling those all the way through as well materials wise i've got a couple of these boards these are quite nice two before by 90 centimeter boards as well so i should be able to make the entire unit out of these i've got some csl construction timber as well that's going to be creating the main frame and this is basically just going to be cladding over it to give it a nice facial all the way around it i don't have a specific template for the smev so i'm going to do what i did in the last time that i built a kitchen unit for a smev unit and that's basically just to use the cardboard box that the unit came in, cut all the way around that and all the way around to the point where the uh, hub unit fits through it. And that then creates a template for you. So there's going to be plenty to be cracking on with as well. As I say, the uh, unit itself is going to have the fridge, it's going to have the gas bottle storage and water storage as well. So all of this is all going to have to be getting squeezed into one unit that's only going to be around about 110 centimetres long. So just over a metre. So there's going to be lots of stuff trying to get squeezed into this as well. So we'll see how we get along. It's probably going to be a little bit more than a day to build, but hopefully I'll get this video down to 10-15 minutes, something like that, and show you how I get it built all the way through.
So I'm just getting ready to plumb the hob in for the gas. Now if you don't order the hob with the full fitting kit, you do need to order an 8mm straight through compression fitting. That will then fit onto there with your normal copper pipe coming off there and down to your gas bottle or your manifold T-joints, wherever. So I say you do need an 8mm straight through coupling joint uh, with the compression fittings. That just goes straight onto there. Ideally with some thread lock going around as well, just to be sure that it shouldn't leak at all. As I say, when this is then on there, the hub's going to be then getting fitted. I've got a small pipe there that I've already bent to shape that should be all good. And that feeds down through into the metal locker that I've just been building for the uh, unit. That's going to be going down to a T-piece that's just going to be sitting there. And that's going to have the fridge and the hub going down to a master on-off uh, stopcock. And then that's going to then be going off to the bottle itself. So in theory there'll be two on off switches inside for the gas on the bottle itself. And then as I say the little uh, ball joint stopcock as well. So I'm going to get this compression fitting put onto the hub. Get this into the unit. And then we'll get the uh, cup pipe plumbed in. Give it a test fire. So I'm just about to fit the tap into the actual sink. I did buy a different tap. Uh, I bought a similar sort of tap before in my previous install, but I ordered the wrong one and the tap just fell straight through the hole, so I had to send that back. This is the right tap. The Smev units are 33 mil, not the 22 mil holes. So just make sure that you're ordering any right connections and right sizes. I'll put links in the description for everything that I am using in this build. Or as much as possible anyway, including things like the uh, the pump, the tap, the SMEV unit itself, things like that. So have a look in the description for links. So as I said, I'm just going to get this one installed now. Now wiring in the taps are quite simple and easy, but to do it with the pump, so that when you turn the tap on, it initiates the pump as well. That basically creates a full circuit, so you need to be taking the negative from the tap to the positive of the pump then linking that back to the power feed that came into the tap. I'll show it when it's all wired up and I'll run through it again once it's all wired so you can see exactly what I mean. So first things first, I'll get the tap in place, which is just a case of screwing in the, the washer once it's in, and then it'll be ready to get wired in. Right, so there's the tap in place, folds up and down nice and easily. Just a single lever for the cold tap as well. I haven't put a mixer in there because I haven't fitted hot water. So it's just going to be cold. Going straight down to a submersible pump that's going to be sitting in here for the water container. So now that's actually fitted, it's just a case of wiring it in. So I'll pick it up in a second when I've got all the wiring fed through and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Right, so that's all the wiring done for the tap as well. So that's the tap fully fitted with all the wiring down and going down to a submersible pump as well. So wiring, wiring wise, you've got your main power feed going in. So you've got your positive and negative coming from your battery there. You've got your positive going to the positive of the tap. The negative of the tap then goes into a chock block and connects to the positive of the pump. Then the negative of the pump then completes the circuit using the negative of your power feed. So you've got power in to the positive of the tap, negative of the tap down to the positive of the pump, then the negative of the pump back to the actual negative of the feed itself. And then once it's all wired in and with a fuse on the board as well, I can just test it away. So you can hear that whirring. I don't really want to whir it too much because 
These aren't supposed to be run in the air. You do need to have them run, uh, running in the water to prolong them. So this is just a test, just to show it. But as I say, when I lift the lever, you can hear the pump whirring away. So that's a tap all wired in now. Now it's just a case of running a water feed tube from the pump up to the feed on the actual tap itself. And then that'll have running water all fed in for the actual sink unit itself. And then it's just a case of running the drainage down to the hole that I've got through the hole there as well. And then that'll be the unit pretty much all installed. So I've just been finishing off the actual kitchen unit. I've just gave it a test fire up on the gas to be sure that both the hob and the fridge were working fine and that there were no leaks just before I put the final access panel back on there just to cover that away and tidy it away. I've got a board cut that sits on top of the fridge that slides all the way back to the carpeted panel as well so that will enclose the fridge completely within uh, underneath the panel going back to the vents behind it as well. I've just had everything tested and fired up, the fridge fired up straight away, the hobs fired up straight away and I've just had some leak detection spray just to be sure that all of the actual compression fittings were nipped up 100% tightly if it's not then when you spray some of that on it'll just bubble up similar to the uh, sort of thing that you do with washing up liquid but because that's in an aerosol can it means you can get into more awkward places and as you can see it, there's still some of the residue still on the actual uh, connectors because again it's just a case of always being more safe than sorry when it comes to gas just because gas is one of the most potentially deadly things in a camper van so as I say whenever you're sort of putting any fittings in always be 100% certain that it's actually secured and there's no gas leaks and that's one of the quickest and the easiest ways to check spray that on the connectors fire everything up if there's any bubbles coming from the connectors they need nipping up if they're not then, as I say, everything's fine. Right, so the kitchen unit is now fully complete. I've had a gas safety engineer around just to double check all of the gas fixtures and fittings, as well as the full 240 electrical system in here as well. He's done some uh, gas leak tests on all of the fittings for the, uh, for the fridge, for the hob, in the gas locker area as well. He was more than happy, he signed it all off. He's gave me a certificate of conformity saying that everything's been tested, it's all working fine. So now that all that's been signed off, I've been able to put the final little uh, access panel back into place. It's got a ply sheet sitting on top of the fridge, running all the way back to the uh, actual uh, ply panel at the back. So that basically encloses the rear of the fridge into a self-contained, pretty much airtight unit. So that means all of the airflow behind the fridge will just be circulating to cool the actual elements on the back of the fridge and that's what cools the fridge down when it's running on gas. Now in the water storage container, that's all been uh, boxed in as well, as you can see, all nice and neat. Perfect little cupboard for storage for a nice 20, I think that's a 25 litre water tank. As you can see, it just fits in and out perfectly inside there. And then when it's locked up, that's not going anywhere. I've already showed you the gas side as well. I say the fridge is all in now as well. That's all fine, it's all been tested, fired up as well. So hob wise, as I say, see that's oh, all working fine. That's on both burners as well. Bit, there we go. So there's the gas all working on the hubs. I've got the tap wired in. Obviously there's no water in it, but you can hear the pump whirring away. So as soon as there's actually water in the actual tub, that'll allow free flowing water to come through as well. And that's a nice little foldable tap on there as well. Just turn these hubs back off. Close the lids. And there we go. Just uh, see if I can get the fridge fired up as well. It doesn't generally take long because there's not much uh, copper connection between the fridge and the actual unit. So let's... Right, as you can see, or should hopefully be able to see, there's a nice little blue flame at the back of that fridge there as well. So that's showing that the gas on the fridge is all working as well. It's all lit up and that will be cooling the element on the back of the fridge. And that will give me basically a three-way working fridge on gas. I've tested it on the electrics as well, so that's all fine as well. And obviously if I turn the actual uh, knob up, it'll increase the fl flame size. 
You can see it's just got a little more intense there, and a little more intense again, and all the way off, and it's back off again. So there's a three way fridge, fully installed, water storage and water pump sink, fully installed, SMEV 922 unit, fully installed, with a metal line gas locker in that side as well. So, I hope you found this video useful, informative. If you did and it's going to help towards your build or anything like that, do give the video a good old thumbs up. If you haven't already, have a look at my channel. There's loads of content on there already. I've documented every single job in this van, job by job, everything from fitting the TV, down to insulation, carpeting, bed build, this, that, the other. Everything's documented on my channel. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, give this video a good old thumbs up, and hopefully I'll see you in the next uh, series of this uh, conversion. Thanks for watching. Cheers.